The Office of Inspector General and other independent investigations have flagged on numerous occasions that your ORR, the Office of Refugee Resettlement, has failed to properly house and, and care for unaccompanied children. ORR employees and contractors have reported a, quote, pervasive sense of despair among children at the facility who reported experiencing distress and anxiety and panic attacks. In other instances, children have been physically harmed, harming themselves due to negligence. The IG's uh, report found that, quote, ORR eliminated critical safeguards from the sponsor screening process, thereby potentially increasing children's risk of released unsafe sponsors. I wanted to ask, can you guarantee that no child that you're responsible for keeping safe is sent to a sponsor looking to exploit their labor? Uh, can, you, can you guarantee that? Can you say yes or no that you can guarantee ORR doesn't place children in households with convicted sex offenders or child abusers? Madam Chair, I know you're a mom and I'm a dad. There's very few times when you can say yes or no about anything about your kids. And we've got thousands of kids in our care. And what I will tell you is that the challenge that we face to make sure that those children are properly placed is one we take very seriously. And so we do everything we can to vet those sponsors before so, we let so those children go. Just reclaiming my time, you conducted uh, child, um, you only conducted child abuse and neglect background checks in 9% of the cases in 2021. Are you doing these checks in 100% of the cases today, yes or no? Madam Chair, we are doing the uh, very thorough vetting process for any sponsor to make sure we understand who is asking for uh, the opportunity to care for okay, these children. Okay, so my question is, are you doing 100% background checks to ensure that the, the children are not going into the households of convicted sex offenders or child abusers? We do background checks on every, every potential sponsor. We check for criminal records of every potential sponsor. FBI checks? We do background checks, and the FBI usually does a lot of those for us. I look forward to seeing that uh, confirmed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of questions I have about unaccompanied minors. We all, but I have unlimited time, and I do want to turn to the questions around reappointing the NIH officials, including Dr. Fauci, after their terms expired in January, or December of 2021. So on May 5th, 2023, Assistant Secretary Melanie uh, E. Gurin sent a letter to this committee stating that the secretary appoints the directors of NIH institutes and, and centers, with the NIH director being the recommending official. To be clear, the, the letter states, quote, NIH IC directors are recommended for appointment by the NIH director and approved for appointment by the Secretary of Health and Human Services. We then received a letter last Friday, also from Secretary Egurin, that contradicts her May 5th letter and asserts that HHS now believes the NIH director may appoint NIH IC directors. So I'm, I'm hoping to ask a simple question, one that we first asked March of last year. Who appoints, who, who reappointed? Who reappointed the IC directors when their terms expired in December of 2021? Yes or no, are you claiming then that NIH director Francis Collins signed the appointment paperwork? Madam Chair, as we, said, as we have said to you, whether in letter or orally, uh, the appointment, appointments we have made are valid. We stand by those appointments. Uh, if you read the statute, it's very clear. The okay. director okay. shall be Reclaim. appointed by the secretary acting through the director of the okay. National Institute Reclaiming of Health. Claiming my time, is there a form in NIH or HHS with Director Collins' signature reappointing Anthony Fauci and the rest of the IC directors? And if so, why will you not provide it to us? Madam Chair, um, we, there is ample evidence of the process that we use. It is valid under law. The ap appointments we have made, we stand by them. So, uh, so, Mr. Secretary, is there a form? Is there a letter? Can you provide us any documentation that Dr. Collins appointed, reappointed these IC directors? Uh, although we have already provided you with a lot of information, I'm more than willing to have okay. my team follow up with you okay. on that particular question. I haven't seen it yet. On June 8th, 2023, June 15th, 2023, you signed affidavits ratifying the selection and prospectively reappointing certain INH, uh, NIH directors. Was that the first time you signed a document related to the reappointments? Can you just say yes or no? Again, Madam Chair, the, the evidence is, is before okay. you. Okay, it's ample. Okay, that we have what evidence? The process that we've appointed, we've answered these questions in writing. 
I'm saying to you I again that to we see stand the documents. I have another question. Do you agree that NIH Institute and center directors qualify as inferior officers of the U.S.? Yes or no? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Are they inferior officers of the U.S.? Uh, again, Madam Chair, now, if we can go into the uh, questions of how to interpret a particular word here or there, but what I'm saying to you is that the appointments and reappointments of our personnel at NIH, our directors, was done validly. So, Mr. Secretary, you're an attorney. You have hundreds of lawyers. Does the HHS officials believe under the Constitution that the NIH IC directors are inferior officers or not? That's the question I'd like to have answered. And we believe that the process we used to appoint those NIH directors was valid. So are they, uh, are they, are they inferior officers? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I can get back to you and have that conversation in more detail at some point if you want to work okay. through my staff. But what I will tell you is that okay. those IC directors are working okay. properly because they were validly appointed and reappointed. Send the documentation, Mr. Secretary. I'd like to ask unanimous consent to enter into the record the, the New York Times article entitled, In One Flaw, Questions on Validity of 46 Judges. And I, I'd like to suggest that you read it. It's about 46 pat patent judges who were appointed by the Patent and Trademark Office and not the Secretary of Commerce and how the Department of Justice has all but admitted the appointments were improper. The situation is similar to this one. And the article makes clear, it's well established, inferior officers must be appointed by the President or the Secretary of the Agency. Unanimous consent to enter this into the record. That would be taken up at the end of the hearing when we take up the other unanimous consent request. Thank you. Okay.